Sir, are you quite all right? You haven't been quite yourself for the last few days. I'm just under a lot of pressure, and I'm feeling very worried about my life. For as long as I can remember, I've been having these nightmares where I keep seeing these great big yellow eyes appearing outside my window, and ever since the virus happened, I've been experiencing a new nightmare where I see myself being corrupted by dark energy, and I'm being forced to attack my friends and my loved ones against my will. Well, from what you described, the reason why you keep having those nightmares is mainly as a result of your curse. But you should be okay knowing that you could never use your Mustang powers for any evil activity. But that's not all. After seeing me do these evil acts, not only are my powers extinguished, but I'll also die. You shouldn't worry, sir. Even if these things are prophesized, there's no way for them to ever come true. In the meantime, what do you have in mind for today's episode? Well, I have been thinking about blogging another animated fairy tale spoof from Vanguard. You mean Happily Never After 2? <laughs> no, no, no. No, of course not. I'm actually hoping to do this one. But, sir, wasn't that movie released in 2018? Well, in Spain, yes, but there's a little loophole to this. If a foreign movie is released in America outside of those limited years, then I have every right to blog it no matter what. Well, I guess it's an excellent idea, but what movie from 2018 are you really going to blog this year? Well, that'll have to wait until next month, but for now... Cue the logo. Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, as I said in my previous blog, the most common plot point regarding fairy tales is that either a prince or a princess can fall victim to a magical curse. Aside from my own, there have been curses where a princess has been cursed to go into a sleep-like coma, they become ogres, geese, or swans, they even become the size of a mouse, or their voices become croaked or mute. And, of course, princes have been cursed to become beasts or frogs. But there's one kind of curse that's been in my mind for a few years. Let's just say that a prince is cursed to be irresistible to every woman that he meets. Well, believe it or not, there is an animated fairy tale film that explores that concept, and that is the subject of my blog today. Released to Netflix in the United States on January 8th, 2021, the movie is Charming. Now, on for the plot of the movie. Cursed as a child, Prince Felipe Charming compulsively proposes to every woman he encounters, leaving a trail of lovesick ladies and scorned lovers to wreak vengeful havoc upon the kingdom. Ultimately, Felipe's exasperated father, King Charming, gives the young prince an ultimatum. Find a true, true love before his 21st birthday or lose all claim to the throne. Along his journey, Felipe meets a crafty thief named Lenore, who's not only cursed to never be able to love, but she's also bribed to escort Charming to a place called Fire Mountain where he will choose his bride. So, what are my thoughts on the movie? Well, at first, I was a bit skeptical, but after seeing the movie, both online and on Netflix, I thought it wasn't that bad. But still not that great either. Like Happily Never After, Hoodwinked, Red Shoes, or any other fairy tale spoof, it can never top Shrek. Still, I think it was pretty funny, and it's also pretty harmless, despite the several flaws that it has. But for now, let's just move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was directed and written by Ross Venneker, and the film has been in development at Vanguard Animation ever since 2011, with a budget of under $20 million. Speaking of which, I previously talked about Vanguard in my blogs of Happily Never After and Valiant, 
and Vanguard's founder was Shrek producer John H. Williams. And in my opinion, Vanguard has had a very mixed film resume over the years. And I believe that their worst movie that they ever made were the Space Chimps movies. Anyway, joining Vanguard in developing Charming was Henry Skelsey's newly formed animation production company, 3QU Media, in association with Cinesite at Montreal, Canada. As for the CGI animation for this film, well, to me, while several characters are designed pretty cartoony, I think the CGI animation is decent at best and mediocre at worst. However, the interesting part about the animation is when it goes into freeze frame whenever Felipe goes into thought, which to me seems pretty clever. Also, while the story is okay, at the same time, it's very predictable and kind of rushed. But, I think the journey that Felipe and Lenore go through to reach Fire Mountain is very challenging. You see, there are these snake-like leaf creatures in a foggy forest, giant headhunters known as the Metalesia, and a rock giant. Also, I think this film has a very underrated soundtrack. Two of my favorite songs being the love song Magical and the half oracle song Balladino. And that's basically all I got from Mustang Notes. So let's just move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. Our main character, Prince Felipe Charming, is voiced by Wilmer Valderrama, who got to be in Clifford's really big movie, Pixar's Onward, and Disney's Encanto. Felipe is a handsome prince who's cursed to make every woman that he meets fall in love for him. But he's never felt the same feeling himself. In my opinion, Felipe starts off very immature due to him being a womanizer, as well as being a flippin' klutz. And he doesn't know how to use a sword or a bow and arrow. But at the same time, with his 21st birthday closing in, Felipe is determined to end his curse and learn what true love really means to him. Also, I like that he wants a happily ever after, not just for himself, but for everybody else. Plus, I just can't believe he would actually attempt to have himself get executed in order to save his kingdom. Next we have Lenore Quinones, voiced by former Disney Channel star Demi Lovato, best known from Sunny with a Chance, Camp Rock, Princess Protection Program, and of course, Smurfs, The Lost Village. Lenore is a street smart and cunning jewel thief who is cursed to never love, and she's the only girl in the movie who's immune to Felipe's curse. While on her quest with Felipe, she's disguised as a man named Lenny. And I have to admit, I really love this character. Not just because of Demi Lovato's voice acting, but because of her sassy and sly personality. Also, she's very distrustful to others, and I like that she's really skilled with a bow and arrow and a sword. Plus, I feel like Lenore is like a female version of Eugene Fitzherbert from Tangled, in a way. And I thought Lenore's backstory was very understandable due to her being raised at sea. However, her one flaw in this story is her greediness, which not only got her and Felipe into danger, but also betrayed him after they reached Fire Mountain. Another character to talk about is Illy, a Robin vocalized by Dee Bradley Baker. Illy is Lenore's faithful companion, and to me, he seems like a very cute animal sidekick. Also, my favorite part is when he delivers one of Felipe's letters to Lenore before he gets himself executed. Next we come to the movie's villain, Nemeni Neverwish, voiced by Mia Vardalos, whom I remember from My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Nemeni is a bitter and evil fairy bent on enacting revenge on Charming for being rejected by his father in hope to destroy love. In my opinion, while Nemeni doesn't really get too much screen time, I think she's a very threatening character and she shows a lot of potential as an animated villain. Finally, we come to Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty, 
voiced by Avril Lavigne, Ashley Tisdale, and Jim. These three are the most popular princesses in the history of fairy tales, and in this film, all three of them are engaged to Felipe due to his curse. In my eyes, they're kind of like the girls from John Tucker Must Die, and they're the reason why Lenore joins Felipe on his quest to Fire Mountain, due to their guardians, King Beauty, the Cranky Dwarf, and the Fairy Godmother bribing her. Still, I think they're very memorable characters, and I like their backstories with Felipe. Plus, I think their song, My Trophy Boy, is a really catchy tune, and I think it's very reminiscent to most songs that folks know from the 2000s, despite the fact that some parts of it kind of make me roll my eyes and scoff. And it really makes me want to say that no one, male or female, should ever be treated like a trophy. Other voices in the film include Jim Cummings, John Cleese, Carlos Alzraki, Sia, Tom Kenny, and of course, my favorite, Tara Strong. And now for my final words. Overall, Charming is not exactly a great movie, but it's still an interesting one. Yes, the CGI animation is both decent and a little mediocre. The story is predictable and rushed, but still, the movie includes a decent moral in discovering real true love, as well as featuring a challenging quest with treacherous paths and dangerous obstacles. Plus, I think the characters are pretty endearing, memorable, and funny, though one doesn't really start out as much. The voice acting is pretty good, and the soundtrack is absolutely underrated. And to be perfectly honest, while there is comedy in the movie, I didn't think it was all that funny. I mean, yeah, I did chuckle at a few scenes, but that's about it, so at least there's something for you. However, while it may not be one of the good animated fairy tale spoofs of all time, I still think some of you out there should at least give this movie a chance by tuning into Netflix and sharing this movie with your children. No surprise, since this movie is rated TVY7. As for my rating, well, I'm going to give it a 68% out of 100. It's not exactly perfect, but I think it's still fun to watch. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power.